Hi guys, I'm back from the dead. So uh, I haven't really been producing a lot of content uh, from the whole period between May and August because uh, I kind of fucked myself into doing something that I realized I didn't want to do at all. But uh, it's all largely over now. So uh, while I was away, um, lots of uh, stuff happened in the K-pop scene. I also got my first pack of uh, different photo cards, so uh, I might do an unboxing video one day. So uh, for this video, originally I wanted to review uh, Red Velvet's newest comeback, but uh, I don't really have much to say about it. So I'm going to review something that I like even more, which is uh, Kwon Yubi's title track for her solo debut, Door. So uh, <coughs> uh, I learned that Yubi was having a solo comeback uh, in between my periods of uh, misery and suffering out there, but I never really uh, followed that until the YouTube algorithm saw fit to remind me a week ago. It's nice to see that the IG1 members are still having their own activities and you know, still re retaining some form of relevance. There's just one good thing in a series of very bad things that happened to the world since uh, ever since it was announced that climate change is irreversible. Uh, so I'll just get to it. My first impressions on the music video are just complete all. I wouldn't call it one of my favorite music videos. It's you know, it's not not a Chonga music video, but I mean, I absolutely love like the kind of like uh the direction in the visual themes. Uh, uh, actually, I feel like the song is something you uh, either hate or love, no in between. Uh, because to some, you know, the the very loud, blaring brass instrumentals in the chorus may get annoying and repetitive to the point of being like unlistenable and to other people it's like a very catchy and memorable sequence so you know it's, 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 even, it's, it's even a song defining kind of like chorus you know what i mean uh i, I fall in the letter cam but to be fair the chorus really just has that one musical phrase Uh, the producers just like came out with it and you know they were just backing on it to be catchy you know or else the whole song is just gone so <clears throat> i think it's extremely obvious the song has like very heavy swing influences uh you know just take that single musical phrase for reference again it, it's got that slightly offbeat Rhythm which uses the brass instruments instead of you know the drums and all that to establish you know the rhythm. Uh, it's not real swing for sure because it's missing a lot of uh, elements that uh, define the genre. But uh, <clears throat> it's good at imitating it. Yeah, you have to give it the K-pop sometimes. You know, uh, they they might not be innovating or inventing like new music genres, but uh, they're they're good at making it seem like they are. <clears throat> Alright, that aside, um, the song feels a lot like an IV1 song. So there's a very predictable build up in the first verse into the pre chorus and then a huge uh, like drop into the very loud and you know very grand chorus. Uh it's it's a very it you know the, the chorus of door is very loud and attention grabbing, you know, just like an IV1 chorus. So uh I, in my panorama video I bitched about how, you know, tiring and surely they can be, you know, and how, you know, uh, they, they fix their choruses in Panorama. You know, when I was listening to this song, there was, there was, a, there was a split second thought that, oh, fuck man, it's gonna be unbearable again, you know, but, uh, it, it's not, okay. Uh, Yumbi's vocals are extremely stable, and just by listening to the song, it, feels like she's in complete control of her voice. So I'm talking normally and I don't have full control of my own voice. It, uh, so uh, yeah, she does her uh, more soothing and sexual parts, you know, in the first few uh, verses of the song. And 
uh, her lord and grandparents, you know, equally well. And you know, her, her voice never becomes out of place in the song. Uh, even at the end, you know, when all the instruments are just blasting at you, she's hitting all, all her high notes. It never feels like, you know, it's overbearing or very overwhelming. And you know, if you watch her performance uh, videos that, you know, Music Bank or all those other stages, uh, you, you can hear that her voice doesn't really differ from the original soundtrack. You know, sometimes I have a hard time believing <coughs> that it's her singing live. You know, she's not lip syncing, you know. Yeah, I, I know she's been around in the industry for like seven years, but you know, it really takes a certain level of skill and talent to sing so well. Yeah, uh, but there's a part that I really don't really like. Uh, before the chorus, there's this little uh, pre-chorus of that musical phrase I just mentioned. Uh, the first time it's done, uh, it's a small delay of gratification for the chorus. Uh, I get it, it says, okay, Panorama did it as well, you know, it makes the drop in the chorus like all the more impactful. Uh, but the second time it's done, you know, they don't pull any new punches. And even worse, uh, she like bef before before it you know uses that musical phrase again, she goes she just got a few high notes you know in in the few lines before, and after that there's a huge mood shift for like eight seconds before the drop in the chorus happens. So it's kind of nitpicking. I know I'm nitpicking, but I mean it did strike me as a bit odd, you know, on my first listen. Uh, in contrast, the transition into the final chorus, you know, the, the, the final sequence of the song is like a, a, a lot more smoother. There's a very inconspicuous addition of a piano trill that heightens the tension. I guess that's the word, <laughs> the tension along with the addition of the other breath instruments for us. I, 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 I don't really know how to show you, I mean, just give you a lesson, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a very small thing, but you know, it made, it made all the difference for me. So, <clears throat> now, let's get into the music video itself. So, in line with the swing and jazz theme of the music, uh, the entire video just screams opulence and luxury. Why do I make that connection? Well, let me introduce you to the 19th decade. So, the 19th decade was a near decade of relative peace presided over by the KMT after my, my favorite Chinese president, uh, Chiang Kai-shek, unified China in name, ending the warlord era. So, the, this period was stable enough for a large-scale economic projects to occur, to, to be put into motion to revitalize China and China started uh, to unravel all the unequal treaties imposed by the European powers especially the, those after the Opium War uh, yet it was also marked by rapid corruption and repression uh, the drug trade boomed during this period and there was widespread protest against the government's failure to stop uh, Japanese aggression so I really love this period because <coughs> most media portrayals of it have one very common theme you see in every goddamn film that's set in this era, which is decadence. So in Shanghai, where foreign presence in China was the strongest, uh, you see a lot of uh, you see a lot of this like thing called uh, cabaret culture. Yeah, you know, as uh, countless hotels, bars, clubs, cafes, dance clubs, nightclubs, and what the fuck the difference is. Yeah, all these all these establishments popped up, serving a uh, Booths, ladies, all kinds of entertainments for not only the rich and influential, but all the way down to the common Shanghai man, uh, ringing him dry for you know just an escape from the squalor and poverty of the rest of the city. So I can't any I can't find any goddamn movie scenes. Or I fucking like to show you, but uh, if you are familiar with Chinese cinema, you know you you immediately recognize this like like these scenes of like high class 
a nightclub filled with like people in suits and dresses and you know a suite of cabaret singers and dancers on the stage in their shiny ass you know expensive outfits you know belting out the most popular songs and dancers of time you know it's almost a staple of films you know set in that period of time to illustrate the decadence of the dancing decade <sighs> what i'm trying to get at here is that this music video isn't just like expensive or luxurious it screams decadence to me not necessarily using that word in a derogatory way uh, more like uh, luxury and uh, aesthetic expression uh, push to the absolute fucking limit to the point of becoming artificial and surreal uh, we already get some of that in the opening scenes of this video you know which is kind of like inspired it's like uh, not really rooted in reality you know because it's like inspired it by alice in wonderland i mean fuck's sake the song is called door okay she's very bunny ears she starts off you no know, a big too big fuck she starts off too big for her own room and she opens a door that you know leads from like a dull corridor into a colorful and visually exciting landscape uh it's a passing semblance to like the sequence of events in alice in wonderland uh I, I, I've never actually watched that movie or read the actual book. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is that, you know, this opening, like, uh, half of the video is, like, completely dissonant to the mood of the rest of the music video. Yeah, this MV is great to watch, but uh, it's a complete thematic mess. Yeah. It starts off with this meek and subdued concept at the start, you know, confined to this common complex, and then it opens up. It opens up quite literally into this fantasy world, you know, in the forest. Then, after that, there's a small sequence where she walks into this, like, pink ass plane that looks like it would be a nightmare of flying in real life. Then, she's back in this room, which feel, later fills up with these uh, cloud things. And then the final sequence is, uh, is set in this stage with all that confetti and glitter. So, I'm not really sure what the unified message is here, even though, yeah, it's a sight for the eyes, you know. It is really nice to you know, watch. Uh, to be fair, I mean the shots all focus really like overwhelmingly on Yumbi, because I mean it's a song. Uh, her outfits all look really expensive, you know, especially like uh, this gold shiny dress and then this uh black dress with all these uh, silver accessories at the end. Yeah, and all her outfits just give off that you know cabaret singer vibe. You get what I mean? <laughs> that adds to the theatricality and glamour of a performance. I feel like, you know, there's a whole like, a whole lot of like visual elements in this video that make it extremely pleasing for the eye and make for a good visual spectacle, but there's really no like unified meaning behind that. You get what I mean? Uh, the song itself, the, the lyrics are like really vague about what kind of guy or relationship like you'll be like thinking about. Uh, but I guess it's more of like the sensual and harsh up undertones to the relationship, you know, keeping, keeping everything a secret, stuff like that, and the kind of exclusivity and excitement that comes with the kind of relationship. Yeah, but I really don't feel that for the, I don't feel that vibe for the music video. Yeah, it's just an overall atmosphere of like decadent pleasure. And I think that's all good because I don't think a song like this needs to get any deeper. Just all about MB and the performance. Then speaking of her performance, the choreography just sells me even more that uh, swing and jazz influence. I mean just look at those dance moves. It's the kind of like carefree, energetic and slightly unrhythmic kind of uh, motions you'd expect of swing dance. Yeah, I don't really know the characters enough to describe it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's nothing the whole choreography is nothing really spectacular except uh, for this part where uh, uh, the dancers hold her up completely Don't have vision of this guy's hand, please stop for me uh, But Yumbi looks completely at ease uh, and natural while dancing and you can even tell that from her expressions, you know, she switches between uh, elation, excitement and that an innocent or and that ingenuous look I mean in between dance moves so It really seems like, you know, she's going Solo because there aren't other members around to take the spotlight away from her. Yeah, and then you know we are getting a whole like package, you know, just her on on this stage. 
<clears throat> yeah, uh, and I get that, you know, I, again, I get that she's been around for like seven years, but it's really impressive how naturally she takes to a solo performance. Uh, all in all, I think Door is a solid title track for Yumbi solo debut, and I especially love the swing influences in the song, uh, because it's a good compliment for her very strong vocals. Uh, it's not a music video I watch again and again for the aesthetic. I mean, it doesn't hurt anyone's eyes either. Yeah, and uh, based on her performances during her promotions, I, I'm looking forward to see how she moves forward from, you know, being under the shadow of uh, of being an IG1 member and becoming all solo with her own identity. Alright, yeah, that, that's it for this video.